Good morning. Today is Friday, March 4th. It's early in the morning. But I've got a couple of uh, kiln loads that came out. I'd like to share them with you real quick. Um, actually, it might not be very quick because I've got something I want to explain to you a little bit later. So, I mean, hang in there if you can. Um, so this is, I'm just like all about this right now. So um, this is um, the speckled clay that I use with um, Mako Cenote clays and then obviously maybe it's not obvious but I also added um, dark flux here I'm I'm really loving this combination um, I did two of those um, just kind of to see what would happen and now that I know definitely gonna do that some more um, those are really pretty uh, so then I've also got I had a couple of those um, chimneys left um, that I hadn't glazed so I went ahead and put some glaze on those this one's got a nice uh, cool dripping going on with a kind of a the glaze is called lava rock and then this is a blue on top of it and then this one is also kind of an experiment this is a um, chimney that I did on um, speckled clay excuse all that white stuff that comes off when I'm gonna sand in the, my next move here um, so what I was trying to do with this one is um, since I had so much fun and such a cool result with the, the cenote I wanted to um, see what I could do with uh, a glaze called shipwreck on speckle and this is kind of cool that turned out really nice too so more of that more of that all right, and for people who've been around for a while, you might remember that I call this my um, dream glaze combo. I love this. Um, it's just so pretty. Uh, so anyway, I did. I went back to my dream glaze on this piece, and um, my original intention was when I threw this on one of my uh, Freestyle Fridays was to put a cork in it, right? So. As I've explained over the months here, um, clay, when you throw it, it's, it starts out a certain size and then it shrinks. And this clay shrinks by about 12%. So um, when you start out, you have to start out bigger, wider, taller than you are hoping the finished piece to be. So this is a three inch cork. And so my aim was to get this span to be, um, to finish at three inches. And to do that, you kind of have to throw it to about, I don't know, I don't remember the exact number, but it's like, just like three and a quarter inches or something like that. Um, there's a calculator I used to get that all figured out. So I thought I did that. Um, I might have overcompensated here, and apparently I did, because here, look at this. Whoop. Like... I think I could stick that cork. Oh shoot, now it's probably in there forever. Oh well, I'm not gonna fumble with this, but <laughs> it's in there. Uh, it's just not the way you want it to be because uh, now you wanna, well, I think I probably have to flip this over now. Oh, are we solving problems in real time on camera? Whatever. Anyway, so overcompensated here, undercompensated here. Um, same story, I was working on um, kind of a jug that I wanted to close up with a cork same cork size, have the nice taper here, right? So it's, it tapers in, and then boom, right? Well, yesterday Aaron actually trimmed this down for me because it was a sliver too big, um, and you really had to like push on it, and it was at risk of breaking the piece to get the cork to stand there. So that's working now. That one is probably um, the better... Um, of the two experiments, although there's really no reason to be sad about this piece because it's glazed so beautifully. I'm really, see, now the cork's in there. <laughs> Got problems to solve later. Okay, um, I was also working on um, some planters. So I've got some planters that drain, and then the saucers to catch them, catch that water in my dream glaze combo. And I realize that saucer is kind of excessive, but um, I don't care. I like it. I think it's really pretty. So if you um, like that, um, there's more planters coming out of uh, out of this studio. Haha! -ha, look at that. Can't leave it alone. Um, 
pretty soon here. I've got some um, that are ready to be glazed. All right, next. This is a little um, a little mug that I went ahead and put in the um, the gold and then the floating um, sapphire float. That's highly loving the sapphire float. It's, it's one of my favorite glazes. It's all by itself here. Another mug where you can see I did some chattering. Uh, chattering is that cool texture effect that happens. It comes from using a tool and basically bouncing the tool on the clay as it's um, spinning on the wheel during trimming. Look. All right. So the next are a couple of series I did. So I did a couple of bubbles. Um, this guy has got the little dimples in it and then the dimples show through on the inside. And then uh, this one is the purple one. So this is the purple bubbles. Unfortunately, um, the purple bubbles are very subtle. Um, they're done with um, underglaze. And so when I put the clear, clear uh, satin on top of it, uh, kind of eats that away. In fact, I've got a pretty good example of that later on with one of my um, experiments. This one I did the, the yellow, okay, dimpled. Nice dimples inside. Um, yellow bubbles. This too is pretty subtle, um, the, the yellow. And then a uh, pink one. Pink bubbles. I added a little red here, hoping that those would show up a little bit better. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to show you about the pink bubbles is I'm really, really cheesed about how that glaze, the pinkish glaze, is um, settling in those dimples and kind of creating a little bit of like a mottled effect. It's really pretty. Um, so I'm going to keep doing that. And then finally, the blue. And as always, blue has got to be the showstopper, right? So um, bubble, bubble, bubble. And then I use the sapphire float again in the um, dimpled area and inside. So that's my bubble series for this run. <clears throat> um, I've, in the spirit of going back to the planters, I've made a um, basically another succulent garden piece. Um, this is all in one piece. It's got drain holes on it, um, and it's ready for you to plant your succulent garden in tabletop. Really, really cool um, when those have plants in them. Alright, so next I um, was working on those um, those mugs that have the uh, cool um, underglaze effects on them. I did a couple of them, two of them here, that have uh, the silhouettes of the trees on there. And I think those turned out pretty cool. Uh, black on the inside, rim and foot and handle. So here's two of these. I like that. And then I did two of them without anything on it, just the the blended um, underglaze applied in a really pretty way. So those turns out those turned out so cool. I like those a lot. There'll be more of these coming out too, because I really enjoy doing that. Um, did the big bowl thing. Uh, this one's not the biggest bowl I've ever made. Um, again with the sapphire float and then on the outside I did the chrome so this is um, sapphire float up here and then uh, palladium here all right so um, I've been working on uh, making sure that I create an experiment um, just about every time I run the kiln so um, that's what these are okay so these you won't see out in the shops these little cups here I was actually this this might actually go out um, these little cups I was trying to see how um, the uh, winter wood was gonna work with my dipping glazes so this was indigo no turbulent indigo and this is the Dutch blue it turned out pretty nice it doesn't run as much as the um, other glazes that I use and I can experiment with that further find ways to make it run and then here's my red, uh, my dipping red with the um, winterwood combo. Yeah, it's not very, I mean, it's okay. So the um, 
experiment findings there are stick to hand glazing, um, painting those, um, those colors on for this combination. Good to know. Okay, next. Um, I was doing the, um, I was trying to just kind of hand paint some stuff onto a mug. This is actually a couple of experiments. Yeah, hand painting some stuff onto a mug. So, and then what happened is I did it and I wasn't happy with my work. And so, uh, like a week and a half, maybe two weeks later, I decided to wipe it off. And what it resulted in, um, the fact that it'd been on there so long, it stained the mug, which I thought, oh, okay, cool. Let's see how that works out. So now you can kind of see the residue of, um, the piece, the, the, the glazing that I had done by hand, um, on there. Um, there was a really, really ridiculous lightning bolt here, but it completely washed out. So there's kind of, um, I don't know, you could use that to be subtle in ways. And then the other thing that I had done was I was trying, I'm always trying to find ways to be really efficient. And I have, um, a dipping, um, I have a black glaze for dipping. So what I wanted to do is this center piece, the center area, I needed to have, um, that uh, satin clear on there and I didn't so if I dip it in my black this whole area without protecting this area this area would become covered in black and that's not what we want so um, I also have the option of covering this um, you know like uh, <clears throat> brushing on the, the satin clear and then I could have covered that with wax which is we call it wax resist um, dipping the piece and then the black would basically pull off and um, drip off. What I tried to do, what I ended up doing was um, I <clears throat> used masking tape and um, I used uh, pinstriping tape to create my lines um, at my borders here. As you can see that didn't work so well right there. Um, so I masked it and then I dipped it and as you can see it the places where the um, the tape resisted the glaze, it kind of dipped down or dripped a little bit. Now it just looks really crappy. So this piece is probably going to go in my rejects pile and um, end up in a um, stepping stone somewhere if I get that going. Um, all right, here's an experiment that I was working on where my main point was to do this kind of, it's almost like, um, applique, I guess. Um, it's a pattern that I put on the piece and then I put a thin, thin coat of slip over it. And when I remove the pattern, I end up with this cool, uh, texture on the mug. And I think it looks so cool. Well, um... Then my other experiment was taking a brown mason stain and staining this whole mug. Um, and then I also flicked on the black and I flicked on some brown um, to create these spots. So I think overall the look is pretty cool, although my um, clear did wash out the, um, the brown stain a bit. And you could see how dramatically it did that because the bottom here is not stained. Uh, it does not have the clear on it, but it's just got the stain. And admittedly, that um, stain on the bottom is quite a bit darker than um, what I allowed to happen um, on the mug body. But, um, oh, and then also I had a mishap with the glaze here where it stuck to um, a cookie and um, chipped off there. So this piece, I, I'm not sure what the future holds for it. Um, it might end up in our collection or it might end up in my rejects pile. And then finally, this is one of the experiments that I, I was very excited about. So, this is what's called slip trailing. Um, the gist of it is uh, you, it, clay is um, mixed with water until it becomes kind of a paste consistency or a watery, almost um, almost fluid consistency. And then you use, I was in this case, I used a bulb applicator um, and drew the slip onto the piece. And this is what you end up with. I've done this before, <clears throat> but um, I was working, this time I was working on um, my slip consistency because if you aren't careful, if you have too much water, um, the slip actually just sinks. So as you can see, these pieces 
I had way too much water. So the clay, there's a little bit of clay there. There's a hint of, of a texture, but unfortunately it's not popping off of the piece as much as it is on this one. So this one we have the, um, the thicker slip, right? And so um, I was just practicing drawing with that bulb applicator and not very impressed with myself here. Um, in fact, these jittery lines you see here, this is um, basically, you know, I've got the, I've got the bulb applicator in my hand, right? And I'm squeezing, squeezing the slip out carefully while drawing and trying to have uh, control and precision. And while I'm doing that, my hand's going, like, oh. it's a hard squeeze, it's a hard squeeze. And then you're like, oh. so um, what I've learned is that I need to relinquish control. Um, see, that one's really jittery too. Um, if you relinquish control and you don't go slow, if you go fast, you end up with um, smoother lines. Um, so basically, uh, I need to free myself from trying to be so precise with this stuff. The other thing that was tested here is how the texture would fall um, and look when I coupled the um, the treatment with various glazes that I have. Um, but before I did that, I added what's called um, a rutile, rutile wash. So I squish the whole thing in what's called rutile wash and then I wipe it back and it leaves this kind of um, shadow of color inside of the texture so that you wash that back. And then um, I put various glazes on there to see how that would work, um, how it would look. And I have to tell you, well, after I did the glazes, I also kind of whoosh, whoosh, um, knocked down the tops of these so that it would show more. Um, I have to tell you, I'm really like loving this one a lot. I like the way that that, uh, this is lavender mist and I'm really loving the way that that pools around the, um, around the detail. This one's not bad too. This one's that, um, mulberry. And then this is, um, shoot. What's it called? What's it called? It's the, not Mayflower, but something like that. And then this is wasabi. So um, it turned out really cool. And I think what I'll end up doing, um, so as I'm holding this, these, um, these textured pieces are a little bit sharp. They're a little bit annoying in my hand. Um, so what I'm gonna do then is the next time I work on this, I will make sure that I allow time to kind of knock down these, these pieces um, so that they're not stabbing me in the hand. It's not an awful thing, but it's just not pleasant. So yeah, um, a lot of goofing around with stuff and trying things and um, also um, naturally working on um, people's special requests, custom orders. So uh, that is what's going on here. Um, my next moves for the day are to uh, sand the pieces that I intend to take over to um, Pop's Marketplace later on today. Um, and then I have to wash those uh, by hand, dry them, put price tags on them, inventory, get all that stuff in a box, take it over there. Um, so Aaron and I have a couple of um, outings today. We're going to go get some more clay as well. So, um, And then uh, I should also mention that some of these pieces are going to end up at uh, Reina Bobena's. So um, when it comes to these, I think uh, one of each of these, one will go to Pops, one will go to Reina's here. Bubbles are going to Pops. Um, these will likely go to Reina's. Um, succulent planter is going to Pops. This planter is going to Reina Bobena. Um, might split those, one to Pops, one to Reina Bobena. This one will go to Pops. Um, damn it, I did that again. Wow, stop. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so I got a busy day ahead of me here. So, um, and, and a lot more pottery to do this weekend. So uh, thanks for watching if you're still with me and um, have a great weekend. So long.